Hey, we're two fat guys. And we just watched The Amazing Spider-Man. We didn't just watch The Amazing Spider-Man. That's, that's true. This is a, a weird special. This is a weird video. Mm -hmm. um, Extra headspace. <laughs> yeah. Included. Um, I'll set up tile, so. I will go lower to make it, to accentuate it. Right. Um, what the thing we were talking about. So we watched it last night. We did not uh, record a video last night, and we didn't watch it together for the first time. A movie on this on this list. Which, by the way, we all blame you for last night. We had like every problem last night. Not just the well, not I, sold out. I like said, this. "Hey, six forty-five is when you should be there," and no one arrived at six forty-five. So you have no one to blame but yourselves. You no, have told me you weren't going to be there. I would have gotten your tickets. Parking was terrible. That's not my fault. <laughs> we, no, we decided. <laughs> we took a vote. We took a vote. We voted on that. <laughs> Sorry, it's democracy. Unless you hate America, on this of all days, you're going to hate America. Yep. Okay, it's the Fourth of July. It's part <laughs> I should have this going to be posted. Nope. How are we talking about this? <laughs> this random day, on the eleventh of July. July. <laughs> yes. Why are we waiting to post this? It's Marvel Madness. Because it seems lazy. And now, now I have to not post. Now you have to not post today. It was way too after midnight, and then yep. post. But, anyways, uh, so yeah, we watched a separate which is interesting, we didn't talk about it at all. No, yeah, we have not, we not, have not said one about it. Um, so you hated it too, right? The worst. <laughs> um, I thought it was really good. Okay, I'm going to point out the most important thing I think I need to say about it, and then we'll work to all the little details. And Steve helped me realize this, so kudos to Steve. The villain's plan in The Amazing Spider-Man is Spoilers. what is what the writers think is the morally just choice from Mass Effect 3. Use a green cloud to rewrite everyone's DNA without their permission. Yep. Identical. <laughs> the morally just plan from Mass Effect 3 is they've been trying to cram down our damn throats is the villain's plan from Spider-Man. Also spoilers from Mass Effect 3. Fuck! <laughs> right? That makes me hate Mass Effect 3 since this ending... Even more. <laughs> so, like, see, Spider-Man knows this is evil. He's in high school. Um, I don't like that aspect. He's descending. <laughs> but I do like the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, my, my biggest complaint about the Amazing Spider-Man mm -hmm. uh, was there was a dead pixel uh, in the mm. projector that I watched. I see. We didn't have a dead it pixel. It was like middle. It was like right. To, uh, between the very middle of the, the frame and the very top of it, we're dead center. Mm. And, oh, man, my, my biggest, the whole time I was just staring at that thing. My biggest complaint is probably the manager of the Ray Theater who came in and decided to talk to us as they tried to seat the full theater. Just, like... Like, there are people... There are people apparently just... People are too stupid to, like, come up and try to find their own seats, so they're, like, just a line down the hallway, apparently. She had to come and be like, can we move to the middle so these people could sit on the end? Which is fine to ask people to move to the middle. But normally you just come and do it. They like stopped the previews. She like came in and like waited for <laughs> everyone to get seated and was like then trying to like talk to us like this weather, right, guys? Crazy. Who's excited to watch this? I'm like fucking go away. I was <laughs> I was begging Clayton for his red ring to vomit death all over. <laughs> Sadly, he would not relent. So that was my least favorite part of the movie. So so in summary, our least favorite parts about the movie was had nothing to it do with theater the movie. related. Which, by the way, we've all decided we're never going to that theater again. Really? Yeah. I have, I have no problem with it. It's one of my favorite Such theaters. Such a but. poor experience, Dan, and I don't think I'll be going back. Um. So amazing Spider Man. Amazing Spider Man. Um. Okay, let me ask you this because this question was posed to me because going to the movie, I said, "Well, I know it'll be at least the third best Spider Man." <laughs> Because I know it's going to beat Spider-Man 3 and the 1974 Spider-Man. Yeah, 77. So, so let's, whatever. Let's whatever. The uh, one that came out the same year as uh, Star Wars. Yeah, so let's be fair. Yeah. Uh, I was doing it favors. I was trying to be nice, <laughs> Sam. But now you had to ruin that. Um, so I knew it was going to be the third best. Where would you rank this as far as Spider-Man movies that we have watched? It's a tough call. I, I may... Give it a number. I may change this later. Mm -hmm. But... My pro my biggest problem with, with this number is J. Jonah Jameson. Okay, that's fair. Um, I I th I want very much to give it number one. Mm -hmm. See, I give it I give it between two and tied for one. And here was my reasoning. 
I liked the Spider-Man. Okay, Spider-Man Two is the best. Yes. Right? Okay. I love the Spider-Man action and villain plots from Two. Better than I like the villain from this one. Um, the vill- sort of the villain storyline. Nothing, nothing wrong with like his portrayal of the lizard or using the lizard. Anything in particular. Just I found the villain story much more compelling for Spider-Man mm-hmm. Two. But I liked all the Peter Parker stuff much better from the Amazing Spider-Man. Their romance was not annoying. It was just enough. Which is gr- man, yeah. Um, um, his yeah, his first Stone story and is, Andrew Garfield yeah. have a great chemistry. Well, they're actually dating now. So yeah, now they are. Yeah. His first, his first discovering power scene was great on the subway. Oh yeah, so good. Uh, yeah, I think I thought all the Peter Parker stuff built much better than in the original Spider-Man or mm-hmm. anything they did in Spider-Man Two. Uh, but I like the actual like supervillain story of Spider-Man Two better. Yeah. So it, it's it's hard for me there. Um, what? Yeah, I would I would do that too. I'm for and for me the I see where you come from, but again, it, it, for me it just comes down to man. If if the Amazing Spider-Man had J.K. Simmons as J. Jones Jameson, I think it would be number like a definitive number one for me. Okay, so for you, first off, is two your favorite? Is two your and your ignoring the Amazing Spider-Man? Um, because you hold one about two, don't you? Just because you like the origin story. Uh, it's okay. Um, Someone's gonna check these videos. Before, like, here's, here's a clip of Sam saying one is definitely the best. <laughs> the problem is, it's gonna be me editing this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah, here's where I'm wrong about it. You're right. Like, uh, I'm not sure. Do a little thought bubble. <laughs> Cut to you. Um, I think before we did all this marathoning, mm-hmm. uh, one was my favorite because mm-hmm. I think I I just had a poor recollection of two, but yeah, it was also man, Alfred Molina and those deleted scenes from two. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed. It's also the the primacy effect of you know it's it's the first one. So when you're seeing Spider-Man two, you're going, yeah. well, I've seen Spider-Man on film before. I don't. Even yeah, know. and that's and you know, I think it'll it'll come down to the the sequel to this. Mm. Um, I think will be really because again we get to skip the origin story. Well, we get I'm right into it. I'm really two has the, that, those advantages, uh, and then also has the advantage of Alfred Molina turning in amazing performances. Uh, yeah. Doc Ock. Um, and a lot of the surrounding stuff in two is really good. Yeah. Um, so a couple things I want to point out. Uh, one of the, when I heard the reviews before going to see it, one of the complaints I saw is like, hey, see, I didn't, I've not read a single thing. So I, I started like the Wikipedia reception page and they mm-hmm. quoted a few articles and one was like, uh, they said they're being too similar to Spider-Man 2004. And I'm like, fucking, cause it covers the origin story. Like I, I, I thought it was unfair. I'm like, well, of course it's going to have similarities. Like it covers his damn origin story. Um, and I didn't really give it any credence until one section with the lizard when the, the sort of Jekyll and Hyde moment where the disembodied voice was whispering to him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's fucking like straight up Green Goblin. Like that's just straight the Green well, Goblin whispering 2004, and, which I didn't like. That actually turned me off a lot to that. I, I didn't like that moment. Except that that wasn't him, was it? It's unclear because I think at the end there that was supposed the, to be that guy. Yeah, which I think is Norman Osborn. It should be a little. So, well, for, so for, it's very clearly a, a Green Goblin moment. Well, first off, we'll discuss who that yeah. guy is at the end. Um, but even if it is someone else, it just the way it was presented, it, it sort of caught me as okay. This is very similar yeah. to the Green Goblin moment. Uh, moments from the the first that Spider Man, the Tobey Maguire Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can see where it comes from. I'm not saying that completely ruined it, but yeah, also just. He seemed yeah, to go pretty. It was a weird moment. He seemed to go pretty quick from like I'm obsessed with regrowing my arm. This is what my life's been about. To everyone must be a lizard man. <laughs> like and I know he talks about it, and 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 it's it's never that distracting. While I was sitting there, I wasn't going. Oh, this is terrible. Um, but it does develop a little quickly. Overall, I really enjoyed. It, so I'm I'm just nitpicking at this point. Yeah, talk about something. Uh, I I agree with you there because I think it. I was hoping it would go a little different direction, especially because the first time he was lizard, and he was like. Chasing the guy down trying on the bridge. To stop that guy, yeah. he, was, he was trying to stop that guy. Like he was trying to prevent this from being used on people without their consent. Like yeah. he, it was a very noble thing. Like he was trying to stop. And the fact that Spider Man was then trying to stop him was very much a, a reflection of earlier in the film. He's like like, Yeah, you stopped that car thief, but hey, we were in the middle of a sting, like we were trying to do there was a greater good thing there that yeah. you screwed up, which is a kind of almost what Spider-Man was doing at that point, like, oh, I'll save all these citizens. Well, except for this one that's about to go test this horrifying thing on other people. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was hoping that the lizard would be more 
into here. Yeah, trying to do good, and Spider-Man keeps like, ha-ha, you're a monster, I'll stop you, and then I'm like, oh, crap, well, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not. Um, yeah, speaking of that, I... I really like how they took one of the biggest things I think that helps the Peter Parker Spider-Man transformation in this is compared to Maguire is they take a longer time of him being out for vengeance. Yeah, like I said, the first one he's like fuck that guy and like immediately chases him down and has like that one night altercation which works. Mm -hmm. The fact that he just starts fighting crime just out of habit for trying to find this guy. Yeah, and like likes, only is going after dudes that look like that guy. Yeah, and, like, and when we was, yeah, and how they call him out on that. Um, and when we stops uh, first off, also. Not to do anything, but nice, nice avoidance of with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, nice dancing around that line. <laughs> like um, you've got a great power, and you <laughs> should be responsible with it. <laughs> and then he just winks at the camera. Um, uh, no, th we talked about this after because I was thinking about it as we were getting into the third act of the film, and I realized I'm probably not going to call back to it because. Uh, Eric point I was like, it feels like they just dropped the thread of that guy, like, firing the guy on his arm. And, like, really, the only way that comes back at that point, the only way it has any effect would be if if uh, Peter Parker finds him, like, as the lizard's attacking, and he has to, like, choose, choose, to, oh, yeah. choose to not get this guy to go save people. And there's no way to do that that wouldn't feel awful. At least, I'm not a good enough writer, and apparently they weren't either, to make yeah. it work. Like, just thinking about because I was thinking, like, how, how are you going to do that at this point? Like, as the film developed further and further, I'm like, there's no good place to insert this there's no good way to make it work, so yeah. they didn't do it, and I'm fine with it. Um, yeah, I, I like the fact that there's just that kind of that guy is kind of always out there. Plus, so I'm always assuming, gonna be in the back I'm assuming that guy's gonna come back once they put Venom suit on. Once Pete, whenever, oh, like whenever, he'll be the one that yeah, he'll find him when he has the Venom, yeah, when he has the Venom suit on. Oh, which by the way, I'm really hopeful for the Venom suit and two, just because they're taking. They're, is, that, they, is that a for sure? Since this is no, they haven't confirmed, oh, okay. but since this is not Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, one of the first off, everything in like the Ultimate Universe like stems from the Super Soldier Serum and it's all the people trying to replicate it. Mm -hmm. And like Peter Parker was like bred by his dad. Like the reason Peter Parker has these powers is because he was like set up by his dad too. And then like that spider bite just sort of kicked off all the stuff that was in mm -hmm. him. And then the Venom suit was designed to work with Peter. So it, it's this like genetically engineered thing created at Oscorp by Peter's dad and uh, Eddie Brock's dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, like, it's this synthetic thing. It's not an alien, but it's it's like genetically made to want to bind to Peter. So it's still sort yeah. of a similar thing, and it but it's it's a different whole different backstory. And I think it'd be a lot of fun to see them not fuck up Venom. Yeah, which would make a lot of people happy. Um, uh, which brings me, I want to talk about the guy at the end, um, the the mysterious Bowler Man. A mm -hmm. couple things. Uh, <laughs> It's hard to say. I think we could sit and say like these are things. Say, oh, it's Norman Osborn. He's he's the big shadowy figure from the Spider-Man yeah. universe. Um, a couple other options that because I mean, he was also talked about a lot. Like he's yeah. also got something going on. That and his face was in shadows. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm I'm hoping it's not this. Um, but it could be Peter's dad. Yeah. Which I honestly don't know the Ultimate Universe well enough to know if Peter's dad comes back. He probably does, or maybe a clone of him does. There's always clones of everyone all the time yeah. in Spider-Man. Uh, it could be him. I like the idea of it being uh, Kingpin, mm. which I like the look of him, especially with the bowler hat. Like it's I just able, like it was. Yeah, he was wearing a bowler people, hat. Like people were already standing up and leaving. Uh, so it was trying hard to get yeah, a shot of him holding it in his hand. Then, like his the last lightning flash where he disappears, you see like the back of his head, and he's wearing the hat. Gotcha. Um, so I just really like the idea of this, like, like sort of not the giant beast of a mad Kingpin, but like this little sort of like uh, what's his name, Badger? Firefly. Yeah, Badger. A little badger kingpin, um, especially since in the Amazing Spider-Man game they had they're growing all the like animal enemies that you know, mm -hmm. a lot of which go into the Sinister Six. I'm like that'd be fun, man, because people like they always think, oh, you can't go too strong, you can't try to throw too many villains in, it's gonna ruin it. Like, or you throw in a lot of villains, or you throw yeah. in, you come out, you say, fuck it, Sinister Six, deal with it. <laughs> um, it also could be Eddie Brock's dad or Eddie Brock. I'd really like to see if they do the thing that they go from the game where there's just all these like cross species things. Mm -hmm. I would love to see an introduction of Craven like hunting these things and uh -huh. then maybe getting a little overzealous. Yeah. Um, cause I think that'd be a good, a good way to introduce him. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I could know what they were trying to imply with the ending. If they just wanted to be mysterious or this person like literally appear and disappear out of closed rooms or if he's just hiding in shadows and if he like, if anything, the way it was shot, some of it, like, I don't know if this is just, like, your theatricality of presenting the yeah. scene to me, or if you're trying to imply some sort of power here. Yeah. 
Um, which maybe they don't even know. They're like, well, yeah, it's, yeah. which maybe like I mean, shadows. It, it was credited as Man in Shadows. Well, they said they said for a fact that there, there's a hint for the villain in this one. There's a hint for the villain in the second movie in this movie. Hmm. Um, so I, I, most people are assuming it's that. Yeah, I mean, I, I figure. It's, uh, so it's at that point, I assume one. they have to have discussed. I mean, they're already writing yeah. it, so they have to know who the villain is. Uh, they just keep a tight lid on that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it could be Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock would be a good option. Yeah. He's a bit of a. He, whenever I see Ultimate Eddie Brock, he always comes across as a bit of a tweaker to me. <laughs> um, we should briefly touch on uh, Tobey Maguire versus Andrew Garfield versus dude from '77. We're ignoring the dude from '77. Yep. Failure. Uh, Steve would make a better Spider Man. <laughs> I would make a better Spider Man. <laughs> uh, it'd be funnier. It'd be, it'd be more funnier. entertaining. It would be funny. As long as you prep fall off every building. Add mask. Walk. Oh, well. <laughs> Add mask to Black Cat and Crusher. Um, I, I think Andrew Garfield wins by a mile. Uh, I really um, like yeah, almost everything he did. It's it's the writing, though. Because like I said, I like the writing of the Peter Parker stuff a lot more, so it's hard to give him the full... Because for all I know, Tobey Maguire may, may have done just as well in his, in his heyday with this writing. Um... It's I like the doctor's so, question, because like, I, I prefer Matt Smith, but I prefer his Stephen Moffat. To really yeah, but I I think a lot of the, the stuff, though, in, in 1 and 2, like, would... I mean, I've never been impressed with Tobey Maguire, really. I mean, like, he was never... I never looked at him and went, oh, man, they really nailed Spider-Man with this guy. Like, he just never really did anything special for me. He wasn't, like like, horribly bad, like, offensive to my face, like, he, mm-hmm. um, but he never really did much to me, where, where I think Andrew Garfield really brings a lot to the character and made me care a lot. I, it was the writing that drew me in, like, not that he gave a bad performance or anything, he had a very good mm-hmm. performance, but, I am um, like, I, I don't want to say that Toby Maguire can't act those scenes. He may very well be able to, you know, he's in multiple good yeah. movies, um, so, I, I think, Based on the performance we have, I would pick Andrew Garfield. But as I previously yeah. said, I'd like all the Peter Parker stuff better in this movie. So take that for what you will. Yeah. Um, I do want to uh, ask a question. Do you notice, did, did they do a J. Jonah Jameson drop at the end of the movie? Because they're doing the, it, it's, it's, there's dialogue we're talking about, but they're doing like, the, they're doing the news stories on the Bugle Network. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, you can't hear all the things the reporter, it sounds like, said, let's go out to, and like, you can't hear all the name, but there were some J's in it. It sounded like they might have said Jonah somewhere in there. And then, like, you sort of hear a gruff voice talking in the background underneath another conversation. I, I did not hear that. So, Because um, I was picking up, I was like, oh, man. Because when I first started, like, Bugle Network, like, oh, man, what if they lied to us? And J.K. Simmons just shows up. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking. Apparently, he was he was attached at one point. Um, but then. They decided not to have Daily Bugle. Yeah, like, well, yeah, they, they wrote that out, like, in before. There was apparently a, a part where they were like, we want him back and we'll get J.K. Simmons and like, maybe not to separate ourselves from the other thing. Mm-hmm. And then they, I uh, forget who, I know, um, he better Ar- be in the next one. I know Arlie Ermey was considered. No, they better, um, they better put him in the next one. I forget who else. There was another guy that I was like, that's ridiculous. Has that, that'd also be a good J. J. Jameson if J.K. Simmons went around. Yeah. Like, like, sorry, you guys, everyone got, they got it right the first time. Like, yep. They nailed it. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that. Um, how'd you feel about the crane moment? Eric felt like it was too much. I felt like it was just too much enough. I, I loved it. Cause the Spider-Man moments, all, Spider-Man movies always have those like super patriotic, super New York love Spider-Man. Yeah. Moments. And that's the thing. Like you know, New I, York loves Spider-Man. New York I felt, Spider-Man loves them since Spider-Man. I felt it was very true to the character. Like, like the, the comic world of Spider-Man where, yeah, the people in New York love Spider-Man. Like he's, he's the one out there visibly saving them on a nightly basis and daily basis. Like he, so like it, while I was watching it, I, I, I had that feeling. I was like, is this too much? No, no, it's not. Like I really, I enjoyed that where it's not just Spider-Man saying the day. It's Spider-Man like getting help from people who he already helped, like mm-hmm. giving all his little deeds, like have meaning later in this kind of big climactic moment, um, which I really enjoyed. Uh, so yeah, I I really liked that moment. Um, yeah, just I mean, I could have done without the the first one where he misses and then yeah the crane lifts up there, but like at that point I was I had already bought into the moment, so I was like, oh, okay, do what you want, but yeah, just get there now. Um, I was I was um, 
and since there's not much, there's a couple things to disappoint about the film. Um, the one is a rare moment with Peter Parker that I wasn't too crazy about, uh, and it's just because I'm not crazy about that sort of thing. But when he first comes back, uh, uh, when he forgets to pick up Aunt May, mm-hmm. and like he's having the fight with them, uh, it was super teen angsty, and like maybe it should be. He's a teen, he's angsty, he's he's fine. You know, I I hate teen angst. It just came across like you're overreacting. Like you know, what if my dad was screaming me, I'd be like, "Sorry, mom," I'd sit there and I'd let him scream me for a bit, and then go, you know, whatever. Up this, I'm going to my room. Yeah. Um, and he's like, "No, I'm getting out of here." Nah. He, not direct quotes, but yeah, it seemed it seemed like too much angst, too too, I, too much hair gel. I think that it felt it, it was uh, a lot of that stemmed from the fact that he had just like just kind of reconnected with this whole like father issue thing, like trying to learn more about his parents and realizing he he doesn't know anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it just kind of it. It's the kind of thing where that had probably built up for a while, and I guess is he he never really had to be that defensive before either because he's probably a good kid like ninety yeah. percent of the time. And this is like not going to change my opinion though. Yeah, well, no, I'm just saying like that's that's why it didn't fucking Spider Man apologist. Uh, the the only thing that the thing the thing I was genuinely disappointed about is he never ran out of web cartridge while he was out. Yeah, uh, because that's the sort of thing that happens that I like with the web shooters is like, shit, you just ran out, bro. You ain't got any on you. Or he didn't have to change in the middle of the fight. Yeah, I was like, they might. I wonder if they might do that. I wonder if there's stuff. a deleted scene that, that has him. I could I could see that, too. Because mm-hmm. um, they, they, have, they have him crush him. They get yeah. crushed in the last fight. Which I'm like, okay, well, at least something happened with them that makes it different. Because up to that point, it didn't matter at all that they weren't organic. Mm-hmm. It made zero difference to the plot. In fact, added like three extra lines to explain them away. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm glad. So I would have liked that to have done something. Because Spider-Man fights all the time without using webbing. He, yeah, he's super fast. He can cling to things. And I, I really, I liked the balance that they found with the um, him inventing the web shooters, mm-hmm. to where he didn't like invent the, the webbing. webbing. Yeah. Like he, he, he we, although, although we did all that. question, like how how did he order a box full of that stuff, or did he just break an Oscorp and steal it? Um, could could have been that. Or because I, when, when I first saw, I saw the bank when he first walks in before he gets me about the spider, he sees them on the table, and I thought, oh, that's probably like the web clusters. Yeah. He's probably gonna like pocket some, and then like, oh, here's what these are, and like learn about them that way. They didn't. And then later he just has, like, he ordered a box of them. Like, fucking, how expensive is super high tensile cable? That, that or, you know what? I bet Spider Man's really good at breaking into places. Yeah, that, I, I, wish, I would have liked that, though. He's like, oh, man, you know what I could use? He's like, if you saw, the, like, they had the commercial in the background, like, he yeah. sees it and he's like, I'm going to go steal some of that. Like, I would have enjoyed a scene of Spider Man stealing stuff. <laughs> and, like, narrowly avoiding getting seen by guards. Except when turn. Stacey sees him again, he's like, oh! It's like, oh, you're stalking me! I- no, I'm here because I fight crime at night. <laughs> so I need this web cartridge. I for my oh, by the way, as soon as, as soon as Captain Stacy saw his face, I'm like, oh, he's dead. Because <laughs> a big part of the Spider-Man character, Spider- Spider-Man's super worried about protecting his identity to protect the ones he loves. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a big part of Spider-Man. So the second he saw him, like, he's, that fucker's dead. They're not letting two people make it out of this movie alive that know who he is. The, uh, that was the one bit that got spoiled for me by the game. Did it? Yeah, because, like, second mission, they're like, like, well, ever since my father died fighting the lizard, I'm like, fucking, fuck you, game. Like, why did you come out a week before the movie and then have major plot point spoilers? Because, like, at first, so you're like, oh, you have to break Kurt Connors out of out of jail. Like, okay, well. You have to break him out of jail? Or, like. It's a uh, terrible idea. Or break him out of an, uh, an asylum. Don't do that. And then, also, you accidentally break everyone out of the asylum. So, part of the petty crimes missions is finding mental patients and returning them to the police. Yeah. You're, you're the worst Spider-Man, Sam. I'm announcing it. You're the worst. It, it's great. The people of New York think so, too. The loading screens have, like, tweets from the people of New York, and they're all like, <laughs> and they're all like does Spider-Man just leave the asylum with Carrie and Kirk Connors? Like, wh- why did Spider-Man just break that guy out of the asylum? Like, what an asshole. Yeah, like... It's, That's great. Uh, it's, it's a nice touch to that game. Um, yeah, so... So, and, and honestly, for me right now, it's hard. Just coming out of it, like, when I first asked to rank them, like, I could probably easy comfortably say, oh, it's, it's, it's tied for the best or it's the best. Mm-hmm. But it's so fresh, it's hard to do that. That's and what I said. Like, the I, graphics are so much, the animation is so much better. That's another part. The all, the, all the stunt stuff they did, like, most of it was not CG. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, like, CG background stuff, but the actual acrobatics and things yeah. they did, they filmed live. 
Yeah, and apparently, uh, Reese Evans, the, uh, mm-hmm. the lizard, said, no, fuck your stunt guys. I'm doing all of the mocap. Nice. So he did every ounce of mocap for that character. Huh. Um, oh, so Steve and I weren't crazy about the lizard talking. Didn't the lizard talk? I thought the lizard talked. It depends on the time. Apparently in the comics, until he ate his son, he didn't talk. <laughs> Because it wasn't Jekyll. It's a Which very, just shows exactly how little I know about that character. I think most of my knowledge in that character stems from like the '90s cartoon. Yeah, it's it's very much a Jekyll and Hyde thing. It's like it's just it's just a Jekyll and Hyde analog with them. Yeah. Um, and essentially, it, they sort of are at conflict. But then, like the lizard eats uh, his Kirk on his son, like oh. while he's the lizard, and then sort of it breaks Kirk on his spirit, and then like they just sort of meld into one person after that because he's it, gotcha. like. The lizard won, so the lizard's like, oh, I can talk, I have, like, mental functions out. Sweet! Okay, let's do this. <laughs> and that may be wrong. Steve just says things sometimes, so if it's wrong, the internet will find out, and there's some comment I'll post there, and a couple of racial yeah. slurs. I, I had no problem with it. It didn't, I mean, because he was he was cross-species, he was part yeah. human, part lizard, it's not like it was just a lizard monster who happened to and learn how to talk. Peter Parker put property of Peter Parker in... <laughs> Because the second he said, like, when he, went, when he left the camera, was like, watch this dumbass have put property Peter Parker on it. And then fucking word for word, like, with the label maker that was in my mind, was on the back of it. <laughs> well, what a dumbass. He's not a very bright guy. He's a super bright well, guy. Well, he's, he's very smart. Mm-hmm. He's not necessarily very bright. Okay. Um, so, but you know what, actually, in the back of my mind, it's, you know, it gives this movie a big notch down in the quality scale? The fact that it means that he's never going to be in a movie with the Avengers. Not necessarily. It's very unlikely, because Columbia's going to keep shitting these movies out whenever they have to, to keep the rest of the character. Uh, so, the, until, the, until Disney says, just decides to back up the Avengers dump truck and dump out, okay, here's $100 billion, enjoy. Uh, which they might. I mean, they'd already, they almost put Oscorp, the Oscorp Tower in the Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. Like the only re- and like they all of the legal stuff and all of the the rights things went through fine. Like they got all those sorted out. Mm-hmm. It just came down to they didn't have like the assets weren't ready in time. Which I imagine it's like all these corporate guys like oh we've done such a good job making it so these car- these universes can cross over. Like oh hey CG guy can you put that building in there? And like fucking no we just we, we week- just rendered all of New York and you want us to put the Oscorp thing in the sky? No we can't. Can't can't be done. I'll put an Oscorp sign on this bodega. <laughs> like Oscorp. But it's just like text pops up like Windows Movie Maker text over a building. Yeah. Um yeah, so like they they were will they they have kind of stepped up to the table as far as getting these characters kind of cross promotionalized. Mm-hmm. Which when you're saying like, hey, this this movie's gonna make you a one point two gajillion dollars you can maybe part with a couple percent of percentage points of that to use another someone else's character. Yeah, I'll, I'll, and likewise, like Iron Man will show up in Amazing Spider-Man Four, and I'd say I'd like to. I don't think he will. I I, I don't mean I don't think that necessarily, but I, I think what's gonna happen is think Sony is going Spider-Man. Yeah, Sony's, yeah, gonna, Sony's, have gonna, have to, Spider-Man. Sony's gonna have to fall on like hard times. They're gonna have to have a, like PlayStation Four is gonna have to like tank and like kill them. <laughs> And then they'll sell Spider-Man, and then they'll be in the green forever again. Because <laughs> Disney will go, well, we have all the money, so here's a part of all of the money. <laughs> and now we have the character back. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't think I don't think they're going to get the character back anytime soon, but I think that they they can easily reach a, a deal that's like uh, like getting a license to that character, like mm-hmm. how you know Marvel could like say like, oh, I own these, and I'll let you use them. And like now Sony's like, well, I own Spider-Man, I'll let you use him if you. Give us all a, a portion of all of the money. Mm. Uh, so I, I don't think it's as far away as or or impossible as people think. At least with Spider-Man, some of the other properties I think are. Um, I think at earliest we'll see six years before I see Spider-Man in a movie with another Marvel character. Six years. I do not think it's going to happen in Avengers two. I do not think it's going to happen in Amazing Spider-Man two. I think we're going to get the next round of movies. So I think you're looking at at earliest what would I be. I could see four years. I don't see it. I, I, well, I could have seen Spider-Man being in Avengers 2, at least in a cameo, if it weren't for the fact that Avengers 2 is going to be all cosmic space stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Um, like I could see them having it sorted out by then, mm-hmm. but then they're like, "Oh, now we're going to space." Spider Man, you're not in space. I don't, Sorry. See, I don't see them having it sorted out by then. No, I do. Well, those they're... are those are opinions, and the only two that matter. Uh, so that's that's that. That is the last Marvel Madness movie for a while. Yeah, what's the next Marvel movie coming out? Like Iron Man three? Probably Iron Man three. I think it's next year, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, May. Uh, Wolverine two. Come out before then? Probably not. Uh, I've not heard anything about it, so I'm not sure when that comes out. I'm not as highly anticipating that film. <laughs> oh man, speaking of uh, Wolverine in Japan, yes. There's uh, Avengers. There's uh, by the way, there's comic that's Avengers vs X Men. <laughs> like it's in. That's that's probably not. Did you get your free time. comic? I didn't. I didn't get mine. It was one of the ads on there. Also, there's now in the back of mine for Spider Man. They're doing a limited series that started in June, actually, that uh, the main continuity Spider-Man gets sucked into the Ultimate Universe. And in Ultimate Universe, Peter Parker's dead. It's like, <laughs> apparently, one of the first things that happens to him uh, is he, like, saves this guy from mugging. He's like, hey, man, thanks for saving me. I don't want to be disrespectful or anything, but, you know, it's, it's kind of a dick move to wear Peter Parker's uni- uh, costume after he just died. And Peter's like, the fuck? <laughs> and then he meets this kid who is the Spider-Man in that universe, and they go have wacky adventures. <laughs> it's called Spider-Man, and it looks awesome. Uh, so that's that. Yeah, Marvel Man is sent to go for uh, yeah. a good while. For a while. We got plenty of DC Dementia. Let's see what else we want to do with Sonya. <laughs> We're not doing it. Okay. It's Sorry, if we start questioning Wikipedia, <laughs> this whole thing falls apart. The problem is Wikipedia is contradictory on this point. Nope. <laughs> no, we made any list. When we made this, Wikipedia had an opinion, and so did we. We're sticking to it, so... Uh, fucking that's it, that's just, bye. That's I got. I don't know. See you. See you in DC Dimension, which we haven't posted anything yet. So yeah, I guess we'll post. Yeah, we're we're, we're kind of deep into DC Dimension now, but hopefully those videos will be spoiler alert. Soon. We watch DC movies and then <laughs> do this about them. Bye.